Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and this is the answers video for our annual Q&A uh, for 2018. This has become a tradition every year on this channel. Uh, we do a question and answer, so I ask you to uh, give me your questions. Uh, you did. Uh, I, you gave me over a hundred questions to answer, uh, so I'm going to try to go through these quickly so this video doesn't take hours and hours. Uh, but I'm very thrilled that you guys did want to ask questions, uh, so I'm happy to answer them. I was a little concerned that since we do a weekly live stream on the channel now, that the Q&A might be obsolete. But then I thought, well, not everybody can come to the live stream, and even if you do make it to the live stream, sometimes the live chat goes so fast that I can't read all of the questions. So. This was your opportunity to have your question answered if you really wanted to. So uh, I've got over a hundred questions here. Uh, let's get started. These are going to be answered in the reversed order uh, in which they were asked. So uh, the last question asked will be the first question answered. And this question is from uh, John Smith. He says, Dear HCC788, love the channel. Thank you very much. Uh, not sure if I can get a multi-part, especially this late, but I'm going to try anyway and hope you'll uh, at least pick one. As a quick disclaimer, I was born in the 1980s, so by that time, uh, my oh, by the time of my first exposure to G.I. Joe, the sci-fi elements were already heavily uh, integrated. As a result, I easily accepted them. First, a quick one. When will you get to Snake Eyes version 3? I'm biased, being born in the, uh, in the 1980s, but I believe it's a very underrated version. Second, and again biased, in my opinion, the 1990 line was a great G.I. Joe year uh, with many classic and or underrated figures. Given uh, you have one ridiculous figure in Captain Gridiron, but, uh, but every year has one of those. That being said, uh, classic figures such as Ambush, Bullhorn, Freefall, Ram uh, Rampart, and at least half a dozen more uh, could, uh, could have been top figures in any 1980s year. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Agreement, disagreement, indifference, I won't be offended. Lastly, it seems like um, it seems that the change in direction of G.I. Joe represents a cultural divide uh, when the Gen X kids were leaving while the early millennials were being introduced during the 1980s. Uh, of note being that the first wave of G.I. Joes were produced in 1982, the year that is generally thought of as being the first year of millennial births. Uh, again, uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. P.S. Love that you got snockered in the live stream last night. Thank you very much. Um, so thanks, John. That's a lot. Uh, but basically, basically, you have three questions here, and I'm going to try to answer each one. First, uh, Snake Eyes version 3. Um, that is a figure I hope to review uh, next year, in 2019. Uh, I also agree it's a somewhat underrated figure. I like ver Snake Eyes version 3. I've been trying to review a Snake Eyes figure each year, uh, and I think that might be the one that I do for 2019. So that's, those, that's, I think I should be able to get to it this coming year. Uh, the next question is, uh, you listed some great uh, figures from the 1990 uh, series, and I also think those are great figures. I, I don't disagree there. I think um, you mentioned Ambush, uh, Bullhorn, Freefall, Rampart, all fantastic figures from 1990. Uh, I can't disagree at all. Uh, 1990 actually was overall a good year. It was a little bit of a return to form for G.I. Joe, uh, where they kind of picked up some of their military roots uh, again. Um, and in addition to that, they also had some of the really excellent 1990s sculpting. So uh, there's a lot of good to say about the 1990 series. And you listed a few really great figures from that series. Lastly, about the cultural divide uh, with millennials uh, being introduced uh, in uh, to G.I. Joe in the 1980s, and that being kind of um, a, a change of direction for G.I. Joe, I think that may have something to do with it. Um, the shift more towards science fiction heavy G.I. Joe happened a bit before then. You could definitely see that in the 1986 series. Um, and as people like to point out, 
uh, there was science fiction in G.I. Joe all the way back in 1982. There's always been science fiction in G.I. Joe. Yes, I know that. Uh, but it started to tip more in the science fiction direction uh, around about 86. And then, as you point out, in 1990, they actually sort of, uh, the pendulum swung back the other direction. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with what was happening in the toy market at the time when you had the introduction of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which was huge, um, and uh, Power Rangers, also huge. So um, in the 90s, uh, G.I. Joe was trying to uh, emulate some of that. So uh, that's where I think the real divide was. Um, in you know once you get past 1990 and move more into like 1992 93 94 uh where you get a lot more bright colors a lot more outlandish um, costumes and more science fiction and fantasy um i really think they were trying to copy what was happening in the toy market at the time um and gi joe had lost a bit of its panache uh, and was chasing trends rather than leading trends. So that's kind of how I look at it. Um, and certainly, you know, millennials had something to do with that. But I think really the kids that were coming of age and playing with toys um, in the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, were more enamored with Power Rangers, X-Men, and Ninja Turtles and what happened when G.I. Joe was more of, you know, chasing those. Uh, thanks for the questions, John. Let's move on to the next one. Next one is NJED974. Uh, oh, New, New Jersey? New Jersey? Is that NJ for New Jersey? Uh, asks, what figure or vehicle has eluded you in your collecting? Some something uh, you keep passing up for some reason or another. Mine was the Cobra Bat, for example. Uh, it's such a popular figure, but I keep passing on it. That's an interesting question. Uh, not necessarily a grail piece, but just something I keep passing on. I could get it, but I just haven't got it yet. And the figure that comes to mind uh, right now is Tiger Force Bazooka. You know, I've thought about getting that figure many times. I haven't picked it up yet. There's no reason why I couldn't get it. It's not particularly rare. It's not especially expensive. Um, I've seen a lot of them online, on eBay, you know, being offered by sellers on uh, Facebook. And I just pass, you know, I always have higher priorities. It just... Um, I just haven't pulled the trigger on that one. Uh, that's my answer to that question. Tiger Force Bazooka is the one I just keep passing on. But someday I'll get it. When I have absolutely nothing else to get, I'll, I'll get that one. Uh, Mark uh, Hoke, H-O-K-E, uh, it's either Hoke or Hokey. Um, pardon my pronunciation. Uh, but Mike, or I'm sorry, Mark, Mark Hoke, uh, asks, do you get your vintage Joes from a store or the internet? Uh, the answer is both. Um, I We have a local toy dealer here that I visit frequently and I try to get stuff from them. I always try to support local vendors as much as possible, but I also get some things from, um, from online. Um, I search eBay like a lot of us do. Um, there are some Facebook groups, um, sites like OG Toys, um, at conventions, like if I, I used to pick up a lot of stuff at JoeCon. Uh, so yeah, I get my stuff from a variety of different places, uh, including a lot of stuff that is sent to me, uh, from viewers. Um, so I get a lot of stuff that way too, surprisingly, you know, more than I expected, but yeah, I do both. I do some shopping online and do some shopping, uh, in a local toy shop. Okay, uh, Raymond uh, Pascalino, and I uh, again, I apologize if I mispronounce your name. You have to understand I'm from Oklahoma, so English is a second language for me. Uh, he asks, um, at the last minute, uh, but here's my question. Hey, you got your question in on time. It wasn't even the last question that was asked. Uh, he says, uh, what characters would you like Larry Hama to go deeper into? explaining their origin or creating a mini-series to give more prominence. 
Uh, Happy New Year. Thank you. Uh, too bad we did not have uh, did, did not have Brazilian Joe reviewers in Cobra Convergence. Uh, we have a lot of collectors, but none do reviews. Well, hey, maybe there needs to be a Brazilian uh, GI Joe reviewer. Somebody needs to step up and start a YouTube channel. I'd be very interested in seeing that. Uh, but to answer your question, um, a figure that I reviewed recently that I thought was tragically underused in the comic book series was Big Ben. Um, and I, if you read the file card, that's such an interesting character. And so much more could have been done with him. And I really would love for Larry to flesh out that one um, and give us, you know, let Big Ben be the star of a story. I think that would be really cool. Okay, Mark Storm asks the next uh, question. Uh, Mark says, why did Joe die out? Uh, why isn't Joe more popular nowadays? Uh, what can be done to get it back in the spotlight? Well, uh, a lot of reasons. Um, I think one reason is uh, some uh, some really poorly written movies. The two, the two movies that we got, uh, Rise of Cobra certainly could have been better, and um, Retaliation was, was better than Rise of Cobra, but it still didn't quite hit uh, as well as it could have. Another problem, I think, is uh, G.I. Joe has a lot of different elements to it. A lot has just been piled into it over the years. And I, I think we may have reached a point where there, G.I. Joe, Joe contains too many concepts to digest into a coherent narrative. Um, so you have your science fiction G.I. Joe, you have your military G.I. Joe, you have your space G.I. Joe, you have your mutants and aliens, and um, all these things are sort of shoehorned into a universe that wasn't really built for them. Uh, so it makes it hard to create something that can appeal to a lot of people because it's just so scattered. But one, okay. What I don't think is a reason, though, is the fact that it's uh, military-focused, that it's uh, U.S., you know, uh, United States-centered, uh, the fact that the terrorists, or the, the enemy is terrorists or, and fascists. These are not reasons why G.I. Joe can't be popular. There are example, examples of things that are popular right now that have all of those elements in it. And if those things can do it, G.I. Joe could certainly do it as well. So those aren't excuses. Um, but uh, I do think that G.I. Joe needs to decide what it wants to be. Uh, and just be that thing. And not everything. You can't be everything. Uh, you have to decide what you're going to be and then be the best at that that you can be. Uh, those are my thoughts about it. Um, but, you know, we do have the Snake Eyes movie coming up in 2020, and I'm hopeful that that will be good, and it will maybe spark a new generation of, uh, of G.I. Joe fans. We can hope. Uh, I'm remaining optimistic about it. The next question is from B. Bishop. He says, uh, Have you ever considered filming uh, the making of a review, whereas uh, background cameras are rolling and filming you in the process, of you filming a review. It makes sense. Um, it's like the making of a Metallica album. Well, the answer to that is uh, yes, and you may get something like that soon. Uh, Comic Tropes has a three-part question. Um, Comic Tropes uh, asks, um, first, any ideas for your Joe Fest panel? And two, what elements of your show excite slash keep you going? And three, uh, when can we get a Hoodie Coco t-shirt? Okay, uh, answering the first question, yes, I know what I want to do for my Joe Fest panel. Um, I want to talk about all of the really cool stuff that is happening um, with G.I. Joe on YouTube. So, you know, there are a lot of G.I. Joe fans and they have no idea all the cool stuff that's happening on YouTube for G.I. Joe. Well, uh, they're going to get an education uh, at the Joe, Con or the Joe Fest panel. Uh, that's what I'd like to talk about. There's so many cool uh, things happening and so many cool people creating uh, awesome stuff for G.I. Joe on, uh, on YouTube, and I want everybody to know about it. 
All right, your second question, what elements of the show keep me uh, going and um, keep me excited? You know, I like actually completing the review and having a finished product that I can present to everyone and I hope that they like. But that moment when I actually have the, th the review done, and I can actually show it to you. That's a thrilling moment for me. And the, the ability to interact with people. Um, interacting with uh, viewers has become one of the most important parts of this experience. And just be, schedules and time frames being what they are, interacting uh, through the comments section has not been you know what it used to be, but I find other ways to interact with you guys so uh, I can still uh, keep talking with you and st keep communicating and we can still you know keep going on this journey together so that communication with you guys has been uh, very rewarding and that's part of it that keeps me going uh, and to answer your qu third question when can we get a hoodie coco t-shirt I don't know um, I was actually trying to work on a design for a hoodie coco t-shirt and I haven't quite hit on the right design yet um, and I have haven't had a lot of time to work on it so I've only been able to work on it kind of in my spare time so I actually would really would like to get a, a hoodie coco t-shirt out there for you but it's got to be a good one and the right design hasn't quite hit me yet so I'm working on it I'm working on it okay Jason uh, Karist uh, says um, when you eventually get to the Special Missions Brazil set, will you comment on the obvious similarities between Dial Tone and Mainframe and the Sunbow cartoon character Sparks from Cobra Stops the World? Uh, I will try to remember that. It's easy for me to overlook these characters that did not have figures, at least they didn't have figures in the vintage era. So, um, yeah, it's easy for me to forget about a character like Sparks. But hey, Sparks was in G.I. Joe, at least in the cartoon series. Uh, so that might be a good opportunity to talk about that character and I will do my best to remember when I get to that review. Uh, Abadaba says, I love your stuff, thank you very much. Uh, and have watched your success grow, then skyrocket. Uh, and I look forward to a new episode every week. Thank you very much. I look forward to making a new episode every week. Um, he says, uh, I've been poking, posting pics of new sculpt figures on Instagram, getting likes and followers. Do you think this is a good way to start uh, a new sculpt? In parentheses, the 2000s Joes like uh, Spy Troops, uh, Valor vs. Venom, etc. Uh, review series on YouTube. Well, actually, I think that could be a nice niche because not a lot of reviewers talk about those figures and uh, i'm sure a lot of collectors remember those figures and might like to see somebody uh, talking about them so uh, that's something definitely to uh, think about if you're thinking about doing it you might give it a try um, it might be an area that uh, uh, you know that's it could be an interesting niche area that uh, could be explored so it's not a bad idea um, and if you decide to do that, you know, send me your uh, channel uh, if you get it started, and I'll be happy to take a look at it. Uh, interesting idea. Um, Doug Dillo, uh, he says, uh, I've been carrying around my Joe collection since childhood, uh, but I'm about to go through them and assess conditions and start building on my collection. Uh, do you have recommendations on how to repair figures and vehicles, or where do you uh, go for... Uh, reconditioning slash repair help. Uh, the best place to go is probably the YouTube channel Toy Poloi. Uh, Toy Poloi focuses mainly on toy repair uh, and he does a lot of stuff. He, he doesn't just do G.I. Joe but he covers G.I. Joe as well. Uh, so check out Toy Poloi, watch his repair videos um, uh, and if, if your answer isn't there you know see what else is uh, out there. I know there uh, there are a few other people on uh, YouTube that have uh, done videos on toy repair and fixing uh, G.I. Joe figures. Uh, but check Toy Poloi first. That's a good place to start. Uh, okay, Beta Ray Bob says, uh, 
In the post credit scenes from the Ice Cream Soldier video, we see Xandar uh, and Chibang uh, trapped in Beelzebub's dollhouse riding My Little Ponies and having a tea party. Uh, were, they able, were they ever able to escape? If so, it would be fun to see the story of their escape in a future video at some point. Uh, knowing that figure animation videos uh, are very time-consuming to make. Yeah, they are. Uh, hope you and your family uh, had a great Christmas and have a happy New Year. Thank you very much. I hope your family did as well. Um, well, th to answer that, I, I would say that Xandar definitely escaped uh, because Beelzebub forgot he was there. Uh, so, yeah, Xandar gets that in his, uh, in his uh, favor. Uh, you just kind of just kind of forget about him, and then he can wander off. If you can call that an escape, it's more like just leaving. Uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting idea. Um, I'll have to think about that um, if I have time to um, do an escape story for the, the trapped Joes, uh, or the trapped figures. That'll be fun. Um, okay, Eric uh, Detrask says, um, I know during the run of the live-action movie toys, there was a prototype of a new, smaller USS flag. Do you know if Hasbro ever uh, considered re-releasing the original? Uh, do they still have the mold? Well, I don't have any specific information about that. I don't know if they still have the mold. Um, even if they did, it would be very expensive to produce right now. Only a few collectors would, would buy it, probably. Uh, just considering how expensive it would be. So, um, they probably haven't considered reissuing it. Um, that would be a tough one. That, that would be a tough one to actually make money on. It would be very expensive to produce, and you'd probably smell, uh, uh, sell very small quantities of it. So, that's all I can really say about that. I don't think they've uh, considered re-releasing it, and if they did... It costs you quite a bit to get one. You'd pro in fact, you'd probably be better off just buying a vintage one, um, considering what they would have to charge for a new one. Michael Johnson says, Thanks for running an amazing channel. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a good Christmas and New Year. Thank you. I hope you do too. Uh, not a joke question, but I'm curious whether you've ever been to the Tulsa Art Deco Museum, and if so, whether it's any good. That's an interesting question. Um, I have not been to the Tulsa Art Deco Museum. I'd like to go. It looks nice, uh, the pictures I've seen. I have been to the Tulsa Historical Society's Museum, and that has some really cool stuff. Uh, for anyone who's curious what he's talking about, the town that I'm from, Tulsa in Oklahoma, uh, has a lot of Art Deco architecture. Um, in the 1920s, a lot of oil money was flowing into the city, and that's about the time when Art Deco was popular. So a lot of buildings were built in an Art Deco style, and we actually have a really nice, um, a really nice uh, set of Art Deco buildings in the city. A lot of them in the downtown area, but even if you get outside of downtown, you can still find some really nice Art Deco gems. So um, the museum I haven't seen. Um, now that you mention it, I'd really like to. Uh, but if you wanted to see a lot of Art Deco buildings that are still in use, um, you could just take a tour of the city. Uh, there's a lot to see. Uh, the building that I used to work in, the, the Pythian building downtown, is an Art Deco building, and it's really gorgeous inside. Um, it's, it's very nice. So, um, that's one nice thing I can say about my city. I can't say, you know, I can't say the city's perfect. Certainly it's not a perfect city, but that is one thing it has going for it is a, a lot of really cool Art Deco architecture. Um, so, uh, so thank you, Michael. Uh, now, uh, Super Curry Max says, uh, what is the best flavor of Pop-Tarts? The best flavor is strawberry but without the frosting on top. The frosting on top just adds unnecessary sugar, and the strawberry flavor is just fine as it is. So that's your answer. Uh, Zombie Snake 57 says, what is to date your favorite issues of the G.I. Joe comics? Uh, well, my favorite story arc is uh, the Cobra Civil War story arc. It ran through some of the, the 70s. Um, but as far as individual issues, um, number 43 um, had a big impact on me. It doesn't have a lot of action in that issue, but it's the issue where 
Uh, Wade Collins tells the story of, you know, being a, a POW in Vietnam and then returning from the war and how he was led to join Cobra. Um, it also has the deaths of um, some important side characters. A lot of emotional punch to that issue. Um, so that's always one that's kind of stuck with me. Uh, so as far as if I had to think of uh, just one specific individual issue, I think number 43 is the one that pops into my head. Uh, Michael Bassett uh, says, okay, here I go. Well, here you go. Um, what are your thoughts on the 1997 reissues? Uh, thoughts on yojo.com. Thoughts on the Mobile Command Center. And finally, what vehicle do you absolutely love and absolutely despise? Um, the 1997 releases, I don't have a lot of them. Uh, they look nice. and in, in fact, some of the color schemes on the 97 uh, re-releases some of them are better than the originals. I can't complain about that. Uh, what I'm just not sure about is whether or not those figures were issued um, or were marketed toward kids or toward collectors. I have noticed in, that in later reissues of older O-ring figures, they seem to have been marketed toward uh, adult collectors and like the plastic quality of them is poor. Um, and would not stand up to a kid playing with them. Whether that's true of the 97 figures or not, I, I don't know. Um, but some of them look nice. I can't argue with that. Uh, your next question uh, is thoughts on yojo.com. Yojo.com is still the gold standard for G.I. Joe websites. There are other great websites out there, and certainly yojo.com is not perfect, but... Uh, it's got a lot of really useful information. It's great for reference, uh, and I still think yojo.com is great. I still visit the site almost every day. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's a it's, it's pretty cool site. When I first started looking at G.I. Joe again and started thinking about collecting again, yojo.com was the first website that I found uh, and I just enjoyed looking through the pictures and seeing all the old figures. Um, and, you know, also seeing the figures that came after I had gotten out of the line. So I think yojo.com does a pretty good job. Um, uh, thoughts on the Mobile Command Center? It is big, possibly too big, but it has a ton of features. Um, and um, I don't want to go into like a full review right here, but I like its features. Um, interesting design, reminds me a lot of the Jawa Sandcrawler, but um, uh, it, it's, a cool, it's a cool vehicle, but I mean, does it count as a vehicle or do you count it as a playset? It's, it's debatable. Uh, next question was, um, what vehicle do you absolutely love and absolutely despise? I absolutely love the Killer Whale and I absolutely despise the Cobra Rat. A uh, roguish paladin says the G.I. Joe fandom, unlike many fandoms, feels like a collection of fandoms which overlap in some ways. Uh, the vintage toy fandom, the modern toy fandom, the comic fandom, the vintage cartoon fandom, renegades cartoon fandom, modern movie fandom. Yes, there are people who like the modern movies to the preference or exclusion of other G.I. Joe properties. What are the elements that link these fandoms together? Are there elements which link the fandoms together? Um, uh, are, say, a fan of Sunbow, the Sunbow cartoon and a fan of the modern movies truly a fan of the same thing? Uh, or are all these people fans of different things joined together by a common naming? That's a really interesting question. Um, and I think you describe it correctly. It would be very difficult to draw a Venn diagram that completely uh, explains G.I. Joe fans. Um, and this is a good thing and it's also a little bit of a drawback because um, when you are have fans that are ostensibly the fans of the same thing but what they actually like about it are so different it can sometimes make it hard to find common ground. Um, I kind of look at, look at G.I. Joe as a constellation of many different elements. 
Uh, a lot of the elements that you described, the movies, the cartoon, the comic book, the actual figures, the toys, the old figures, the new figures, everything in between, many of which were all very different, and so people like some of them but not others. Uh, and so uh, each G.I. Joe fan draws from the same constellation of features, even though, uh, even though they may not... Uh, be drawn to the same elements uh, it's, they're drawn to different elements within the same constellation of elements that we call G.I. Joe but if there is any common thread to all of it at least you know 1982 and beyond if there's one common thread that common thread is Larry Hama uh, his influence can be felt in all of it some more than others but uh, he wrote the early file cards, which influenced the characterization of uh, the Joes in the animated series. He wrote the comic book series, and that influenced other aspects of G.I. Joe. The comic book series influenced the toys. There were some toys that were made uh, because they were popular in the comic book series. The Baroness is an example of that. Um, even when you move past the vintage era, you see a lot of the same characters repeated. Uh, Snake Eyes, Storm Shadow, Duke, and a lot of what they did with those characters, it's not exactly necessarily the same as what happened in the comic book or the cartoon or on the file cards, but there are echoes of it. Um, so even where they really tried to depart from the old style G.I. Joe and do something totally different with it, you can still see echoes of the vintage era and echoes of Larry Hama's influence. I honestly think that is the thread that ties it all together. A downside to that very diverse constellation of elements that, co that comprises G.I. Joe is... Um, you know, you're going to be trying to do movies soon. You're going to try to do a Snake Eyes movie. You're going to try to follow up that with a, a G.I. Joe team movie. Uh, so everything's going to be updated for a new audience. But what exactly are you updating? Are you updating the campy G.I. Joe from the cartoon series? Are you updating the more gritty G.I. Joe from the, the comic book? Uh, are you updating some later iteration? Um, what exactly from G.I. Joe are you bringing forward to a modern audience? It's really hard to say, but the thing is, you can't be everything. Uh, you have to decide what you are and, and be that. Uh, and that's what these upcoming movies are going to have to do. And it's going to be very hard to please a lot of G.I. Joe fans because even if they do a great job of that, Whatever it is that they bring forward is going to leave behind some element of G.I. Joe that existing fans like and uh, would like to keep. So that's, that's a tough one. But your question is very interesting. I like the question very much. Uh, Tim Bentley says, hey, uh, how are you doing? Uh, I'm fine. Thank you for asking. I'm sorry. I don't have... I, I haven't... Um, I'm sorry. Uh... I don't uh, answer your channel, but I enjoy enjoy your channel. I'm sorry, I have a little difficulty reading there, but it's. He says, um, I have one question. Uh, did you ever, uh, did you ever do Repeater from Night Force yet? Because I cosplay him. And Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you to you as well, and I hope your family is doing well. Thank you. They're doing quite well. Um, I have not done uh, Night Force Repeater yet. Uh, I would love to get uh, to it. I think Night Force Repeater is a really cool figure, uh, but I have not quite got around to reviewing that one yet. So hopefully, hopefully in the future, um, hopefully it won't take that long. But I don't have Night Force Repeater ready to review yet, so you know it's going to take a little while. Night Force figures can be kind of expensive, so um, I have to, uh, you know, uh, wait until I can actually get the figure before I can review it. Uh, the Weapon X says, uh, why, why do the wheels squeak on the G.I. Joe hammer vehicle? I don't know. Um, that's a good question. I haven't reviewed the hammer yet. I do have, 
most of the hammer. I don't have it complete and ready to review yet, but um, uh, I haven't actually had a chance to play around with it enough to really um, to really see how it works and to see, you know, what the flaws might be or find out why the wheels uh, squeak. So when I get to it, I'll try to remember to address that. But uh, the answer is I I don't know. Uh, James Tricklin says, uh, "Wonder what your thoughts." on Serpentor when he came out in 1986. Well, in 1986, when Serpentor was released, I did not love the snake costume. I did not love the sci-fi, but uh, it, I did like the historical roots that Larry wrote into the file card and the comic book. That I liked. That was the saving grace for Serpentor. But the look of Serpentor and just kind of how Serpentor was introduced not my favorite thing. I do have to say though, you know, if you're gonna do something like that, I actually liked the way it was done in the animated series where you had some buildup to the creation of Serpentor. I thought that was done all right, but, um, but still not my favorite thing. Uh, Travis Garland says, hey HCC788. Uh, hey. Uh, I always have loved play sets. Um, I received, uh, pick, uh, picked up a Toxo Lab play set, uh, and it's awesome. A Toxo Lab, that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good find. Uh, did you ever study up on the proposed Cobra Island play set during the mid 80s? To me, that would have been an epic piece next to the USS flag. Um, I do know a little bit about the um, Cobra Island play set. Uh, I know that they ended up not producing it because it would have just been too expensive to produce. The price point would have been too high. Um, and yeah, it would have, been, would have been huge. But yeah, next to the USS flag, that would have been awesome. Uh, since we didn't have a Cobra Island playset, you know, we kind of made our own Cobra Island as kids. You know, we'd set up a pterodrome here and a base over here and then uh, have a little patch of the backyard to use as an airstrip, and that would be our Cobra Island. Um, but it really would have ni been nice to have some kind of playset that would have uh, uh, that we could get that out could actually be Cobra Island. Um, you know, it um, it wasn't meant to be. Uh, it really it really probably would have been so expensive that very few kids would have had it. So uh, that's that's all I can really say about that. Uh, Martin D says, if you had to choose a Joe that uh, you most relate to based on the file card details, who would it be? Uh, well, Stalker is my favorite Joe, but I don't especially relate to him based on his file card. Um, it's the, the only one that really pops into mind is Grand Slam, actually, which is weird. He just has like that one line in his file card that actually describes his personality. Uh, it doesn't give you a lot to go on, but that little uh, bit of information I can actually relate to. I, I think I might relate to Grand Slam. Uh, that's, it, it's an odd one to choose, but that's the one that comes to mind that I think I could relate to. Uh, Weems Wallace says, nice Storm Shadow shirt. Well, I'm not wearing the Storm Shadow shirt right now, but I'm glad you like the Storm Shadow shirt. Uh, that shirt was uh, made by Matt Todd. And if you go to the Storm Shadow review, there is a link where you can get your own Storm Shadow t-shirt. Uh, and thanks again to Matt Todd for that shirt. That was cool. Uh, David Soriente says, are you ever going to do a short movie type thing like the Joburg guys did? Well, I tell you what, I've got an idea for a story that I'd like to do. Um, but I have no idea if or when I'll be able to actually produce it. Um, I would love to do it. I'd love to do it. I, it's been uh, something I, um, that's uh, I've thought about for several years. Um, and as you may know, those little action scenes, that's kind of how I started this channel before I did toy reviews. Uh, and, and I enjoy doing them, but they are really time consuming, you know, the, the scripting, the shooting, but also if you want any kind of set or background, you have to figure out how to do that. It's not easy, and I admire the people who have done it. Um, and having said that, G.I. Joburg does a great job, and you know it would be difficult for me to do uh, to do any better than that. I mean, 
uh, the Joburg uh, storylines that they've done have been really cool and fun to watch. Uh, Brandon Knight says, uh, hello, Brandon. Uh, we've talked uh, a bit. Uh, would you review international G.I. Joe figures? Uh, only the unique ones from different countries. If people donated the figures from the UK and South America, uh, it would be cool to have an international review once in a while and make the community bigger than ever. Uh, I have done that before, and I think that would be fun. I did a review of Action Force, um, and sometimes uh, I will bring in an international reviewer like Fun School Ronnie uh, to help uh, talk about some of the international figures because I don't have a lot of expertise on the international releases so I sometimes have to rely on the real experts the the people who actually collect them uh, but I wouldn't mind doing that again um, I have received more Action Force toys and I'd like to do another Action Force review uh, and so yeah that's something I would consider that's something I would think about but if I were to do that I would definitely want to find uh, an expert on those toys to bring in and do a collaboration so I can really do it right and bring some knowledge to uh, to the review uh, and I don't have enough knowledge myself to do all of that but it's a good question thank you uh, Kevin Maley uh, speaking of somebody that I brought in uh, for a collaboration Kevin Maley how you doing um, he says what GI Joe item has been too difficult for you to obtain so far well uh, it's not necessarily the rarest thing. Uh, I would have said the 1982 Cobra Missile, Head, Missile Command Headquarters, the cardboard playset that was released in 1982, but I did manage to get that one, so not that one anymore. Now the thing that has been a real bugaboo is uh, the Rapid Deployment Force the uh, mail away set from i believe 1993 the one that has the black uh, pocket patrol pack well i already have the pocket patrol pack and i already have the um fast draw figure from that set but i i still need the rest of the set including the file card and that sucker has proved to be very hard to come by i'm not uh, trying to get a sealed set i want the set loose so i can review it uh but um it's proved to be more difficult than i expected and that's the thing it's not the rarest thing i mean i'd still like to get some things like the sears you know dreadnought air and ground assault sets those are very rare and not easy to come by but the thing that's on my mind right now is that rapid deployment force that has been such a pain in the butt to get so that's my answer to that question um, Zazzle Phoenix says, uh, can you do a stop motion for the cassette stories using the Joes, please? <laughs> That's a fun idea. Uh, now, I'm not a stop motion expert. There are a couple of uh, guys that do stop motion better than me. FormBX257 does stop motion. Joe Fan 80, uh, I'm sorry, Joe Motion Videos 82 does stop motion. Uh, I've done a little bit of stop motion, but I'm far from the expert. Uh, so I don't know if it would turn out, um, you know, the best, but uh, maybe I could work with somebody else and, and put something together. It could be fun. It could be fun. It's a fun idea, though, especially considering how uh, kind of silly and ridiculous those uh, cassette stories are. It would be quite amusing to see that acted out uh, with uh, the Joe and Cobra figures. Uh, good idea. Good idea. Mr. Chabong says... Have you ever met Sergeant Slaughter in real in real life? I have not yet, but he is supposed to be at Joe Fest next year, and I am supposed to be at Joe Fest next year, so that should be my opportunity to actually meet the real Sergeant Slaughter. Tim Roper, Mr. Roper, uh, says, Is there any review that you have done that you would like to revisit? Yeah, um, reviews that I'd like to revisit almost everything that I did before 2016 and a lot of stuff that I've done since then. It, I'm almost never satisfied with my reviews. There are a few reviews that I'm more or less satisfied with, but uh, most of my stuff I'd like to go back and revisit. But uh, at some point I have to just be satisfied with the way that it is. But there are a few reviews that I really feel like ought to be updated um, 
the, the original reviews just isn't quite up to par. So yeah, a lot of the stuff that I did before 2006, I don't love a lot of that stuff. And I would consider revisiting, revis revisiting a lot of those. Uh, Magnus Laugo. Magnus Laugo. I apologize again if I'm mispronouncing your name. You know, I'm from Oklahoma. Please forgive me. Magnus. Uh, he says, which military specialties do you feel are missing most uh, in the Joe and Cobra rosters? I'm especially inter interested in Cobra troops slash army builders. Um, were there any troop types you wished you had as a kid uh, or that you feel are especially notable in their absence today? Uh, thanks for everything you do, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, too. Okay. Um, well, I think G.I. Joe really needed a hypnotist uh, and a bird trainer. Why didn't we get that? Cobra got that. G.I. Joe didn't have it. Obviously, that's a mismatch. Uh, all right, I'm kidding. But what I actually I think I might have liked to see is... Uh, well, how about a Navy SEAL? I mean, we, I know we got Navy SEALs, but how about a Navy SEAL that's not just a diver? How about a real Navy SEAL? Um, how about, oh, how about a crew for the USS Flag? Uh, rather than just having like 50 shipwreck figures uh, everywhere, how about an actual crew for the USS Flag? That, I think that's it. I want a crew for the US, that thing back there. That thing needs a crew. It came with one figure. He can't run the whole ship. So, yeah, that, yeah, that's my answer. Uh, Beach76 says, um, if you could send away for uh, a name your own figure, like Steel Brigade, uh, what would you name him and what would his primary and secondary military specialties be? Well, I would name him, his code name would be Hoodie. Uh, his primary military specialty would be Elite Ninja Super Assassin. And his secondary military specialty would be Filing Clerk. Mike Smith says, Since I'm near the end of the original G.I. Joe line, I've been uh, kit bashing and making custom figures Hasbro never made uh, or inspired by the comics and cartoon. My question is, do you feel like there are figures you would like to make for your collection? Well, I'll tell you, I always wanted a Quinn figure. Um, I know that there was, after the Vintage Era, there was an O-Ring Quinn figure released. That didn't really look the way I imagined him. Uh, and I know there was a modern uh, Quinn figure released, and that was actually pretty good. But back in the Vintage Era, back when I was collecting, back when I was a kid, I really wanted a Quinn. And I know they killed off Quinn, but I don't care about that. Just because they killed him in the comic book doesn't mean I can't play with the toy anymore. Uh, so I really would have liked a Quinn figure. And if I were to uh, think of a figure that I would want to make for my collection, um, I'd probably think about Quinn. So surely there's some way to make a decent O-ring Quinn figure. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's my answer to that. Uh, Lord Snoke says, what's your favorite G.I. Joe action figure slash playset slash uh, vehicle? Uh, I love to know. Okay, well, I'll tell you. Uh, my favorite figure, as always, um, is Stalker, um, and it's version 1.5, the Swivel Arm Stalker. That is my favorite figure. Got a lot of great memories of that figure. My favorite playset is the USS Flag. I know it's big, and that's probably a cliche to answer, but I don't care. It's my favorite. I love the thing. Um, and my favorite vehicle is the killer whale. Um, that's the, always top of the list as far as vehicles. Uh, I think it's a fantastic vehicle. Uh, Mark Harrell says, Lego G.I. Joe. Uh, the customs are pretty neat. Uh, yes, they are. And um, if you look at Magnus from a few questions back, Magnus does some really cool uh Lego G.I. Joe vehicles and play sets and stuff. Very cool work. Uh, check out his stuff. Um, he does some cool stuff. Uh, guitar Dude Guy, uh, T Mark slash Osh, um, says uh, Are G.I. Joe figures too expensive to make nowadays, or are we being duped into paying too much uh, for club figures? Well, 
The smaller production run for club figures uh, does drive up the cost of making the figures. So they probably are they probably are priced for the uh, priced correctly for the cost that goes into them. But I don't get the club figures. I still think they're a bit expensive for what you get, which is a lot of reused parts. And I do think they run a little bit high. I understand the scarcity. I do understand that. But even so, I, I'm i not getting the club figures. So, yeah. I mean, if you like them, then obviously you'll you'll pay what, uh, what they cost. Uh, and a lot of people do. But not my thing. Uh, Nicholas Sacalaris says... Uh, can you think of another Joe and Cobra subset uh, we should have gotten and would make sense uh, and a good opportunity to get repaints of classic characters, and why? Um, in parentheses, he says, like Tiger Force or Python Patrol. So we're talking about, like, reissues of older figures, uh, but with new colors and as a subset. I gotcha, I gotcha. Uh, pick a couple Joes and Cobras that you'd put on it. Okay. Uh, my thinking is uh, I would have liked to see a, a desert-themed set. I know there were individual desert-themed figures um, and vehicles, uh, both on Joe and Cobra. At least when you get, got to the Desert Scorpion, you got an actual Cobra desert figure. But um, especially around the time of the Gulf War, I think a desert themed team would have been a nice idea um, and you could get like a um, I would not include like figures that already had releases in desert uniforms like Duke had a desert figure um, you know even Flint had a desert figure and of course he had like tan grunt that's kind of a desert figure but no you could go into figures that n never were equipped for a desert environment but you know, might reasonably be deployed in a desert uh, environment, uh, like like Footloose, like um, Roadblock, like um, like Gung Ho. Um, I'd like to see all of those with a desert color scheme. That would be cool. Um, as far as Cobras, I probably just would have wanted a, a bunch of Vipers uh, in desert colors. That would have been fine. But yeah, yeah, that's my answer. A desert team. Uh, with really, not just any desert colors, but really cool desert colors. Don't give me orange. Don't give me purple or red. Give me, like, proper desert camouflage. Okay, Gray Fox 00700 uh, says, uh, My question, feel free to skip, it, skip if it's not okay. Well, I will skip it if it's not okay. Let's find out what the question is. It says, Assuming you've had a sizable collection for a good while... Uh, what was Mrs. HGC's reaction slash opinion when you told her about it and uh, when you guys met? Uh, I know some significant others don't like the idea of having toy collection as an adult. Um, however, or, I'm sorry, ho hopefully it's, it was positive for you. Well, the answer is I didn't have my collection when we met. Uh, I didn't start collecting until um, actually quite a few years after we had already been married. So... Uh, she was here when I made the decision to start it, and she seems to be okay with it. It probably takes up more space than she would like, but you know, I, you know, I, there's only so much I can do. I gotta have more Joe stuff. But yeah, everything seems to be fine. But yeah, we, I hadn't started collecting, you know, before we met. We, I've only started doing that since since we were already married. Um, that's that's fine. That's nothing inappropriate about that question. That's that's fine. Um, so Troublemaker Toys says, uh, oh, a question that uh, kind of dovetails into the question that was just asked. He asks, uh, how long have you been collecting um, and keep up the great work? Thank you. I will try. Uh, to answer your question, um, I started collecting really only shortly before I started making videos. Uh, truth be told, I probably didn't have enough experience collecting toys before I started making videos about them. But um, so I've been making videos for almost five years. It'll be five years in April. Um, and so I started collecting toys, uh, collecting G.I. Joes, maybe half a year before then. 
So I'm still a relatively new collector. Uh, I still have a lot to learn. So uh, part of the appeal of doing this project is uh, you and I get to go on this collecting journey together and learn these things together. Um, and doing the videos has been a fun uh, reason to learn more about the toys. Um, so yeah, I, I've not been collecting for years and years. I've really only been collecting for maybe a little over five years. Uh, Keith Ivey says, uh, were there any other vehicles on the Joe team that would have you would have liked to have seen repainted in Cobra colors? Ah. Uh, for example, um, like what Hasbro did with the Mobat, the Vamp, and the MMS in the early years. Yeah, like they took the Joe vehicles and gave them Cobra colors. I gotcha. Um, I always thought like the Persuader kind of looked a little bit like a Cobra vehicle. Uh, but we did get the Persuader in the Night Force series, and the Night Force colors almost kind of look like Cobra colors. Um, uh, the Havoc could probably be recolored as a Cobra vehicle. I mean, it kind of looks like a Cobra vehicle, doesn't it? I mean, Cobra doesn't care anything about its personnel, so Cobra absolutely would put a driver behind a giant glass canopy and a gunner up on top with no protection at all. That's a very Cobra thing to do. So yeah, co the Havoc in Cobra colors could work. Uh, Zap uh, uh, Zaprut, Zaprut. I think that's how that's said. Uh, Zaprut says, What is your favorite storyline in the original Marvel G.I. Joe comic book? My favorite storyline is the Cobra Civil War storyline that ran through some of the issues in the 70s. Uh, Lolbo2, or L O 1 B O 2, says, uh, HCC 788. That's me! Uh, what do you think of Shipwreck's portrayal in the classic G.I. Joe cartoon? Apparently, some people consider him uh, an annoying sidekick character like Snarf in Thundercats or Orko in He-Man. But I thought he was funny and entertaining. Plus, he had a dramatic role in the excellent There's No Place Like uh, Springfield two-parter. Uh, the ending with Lady J was touching. Shipwreck said, uh, what's... Uh, Oh, no, she said, Shipwreck, what's wrong? Uh, was there something important in that house? And Shipwreck replies, uh, nah, nothing important, just a dream of, uh, or two. Come on, let's go. Uh, that was very dramatic, and I kind of agree with you. And I understand how Shipwreck could rub people the wrong way. I understand how the character could be a little annoying. I get that. But I thought the, fig the, the character was mostly all right. Um... And like you said, he had some very dramatic moments, too. So you can't take that away from him. Um, I personally imagine Shipwreck as kind of the more gruff sailor that he was portrayed as in the comic book. So uh, the portrayal in the cartoon seems a little campy to me, but it's definitely not the worst thing in the cartoon. I think he's fine. Uh, but I, yeah, I still do imagine him as the sort of angry, gruff uh, sailor from the comic book. All right, Michael Proctor. Uh, Michael Proctor says, uh, thank you for all the great videos and hard work you have put into uh, in this year and every year. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Um, if you had to choose a character from G.I. Joe and a character from Transformers to combine into a new character for cosplay, who would they be and why? I don't know. Um, I don't know. Um... I think maybe like the colors of Blaster and like uh, version one of Roadblock maybe could be melded together, but that's a really tough question. I'm not sure if I have a good answer to that. Uh, maybe like a maybe like Cup and Mainframe. I always kind of felt like Cup and Mainframe were similar characters anyway. Maybe there's a way you could combine Cup and Mainframe. Maybe, but I mean, not, they're not necessarily the most exciting characters. So they're not the most recognizable, but I like them, and I don't know. That's the best I can come up with. It's a very interesting question, and you may have stumped me. Okay, uh, Jerome Kennedy says... Uh, what year in G.I. Joe do you like the most? Well, it's really hard to choose because there are great things from most of the years, but I guess it still comes back to 1985. Um, 
I think maybe 1984 was a better year for Cobra, but overall, 1985 gave us a lot of great figures, a lot of great vehicles, a lot of great characters. Um, and uh, there's a lot that I love from other years, but 1985 probably had the most co uh, concentration of greatness uh, in the line. Not everything from 85 was great. Not everything from 85 was great, but a lot of it was. Uh, Matt Rubin says, uh, Hi, Hoodie. Uh, which piece of your collection was the hardest to find? Uh, the Cobra Missile Command headquarters from 1982. That was the hardest to find. I'm so glad to finally have it. Okay, Adam Verwolf, who I like to call Airwolf. Adam Airwolf says, If I were to begin uh, comic collecting for G.I. Joe, what do you think I should start with? I have number 21. That's a good start. And Tales of G.I. Joe number one. Okay, so that's what you have right now. And so what should you really start with if you want to collect in earnest? Well, it depends on your purpose for collecting. If you're just collecting to read, uh, then I would say just get the reprints, the uh, collected volumes. Uh, if you just want to read the issues, that's um, probably the best way to do it. Uh, now keep in mind, though, that the later volumes of the collected reprints um, can be quite expensive. I think they had lower print runs, and so they can be hard to find. Even the reprints can be hard to find. Uh, but of most of the earlier issues, in fact, most of the entire run, you can get reprints of them to read relatively cheaply. Now, if you're collecting for value, um, then... I would say there are a few issues in the Marvel series that tend to run pretty expensive, and I would probably focus on getting them first. So, you know, your issue number one and number two, uh, you already have issue number 21. Uh, like the final issue, number 155, tends to be very expensive. Um, and, you know, with the prices going up, the, the earlier you get them, the more likely you're going to be able to get them at a lower price. So I probably try to pick those up first. Once you get past the few issues that tend to run kind of expensive because they're relatively rare, the rest of the series is not too bad. You can pick up the rest of the series uh, pretty affordably. Uh, so that's probably what I do. I probably try to pick up those, uh, those rare issues first and then get the rest of it. And, you know, this is a good opportunity for me to thank, once again, the anonymous donor uh, that sent to me what was essentially the entire Marvel Comics G.I. Joe series. That still blows me away. I'm still reading them, and thank you. Thank you for that. Okay. Uh, Erdio21 says, in my opinion, G.I. Joe peaked in 1985 and began its decline in 1986. When do you feel it began its decline? Uh, what made you realize it was losing its edge? Uh, thanks. Okay, good question. Now, I do think 1985 was the pinnacle year, and I do think um, it kind of took a dip in 1986. I know there are a lot of people who like 90, 1986. We're talking about my personal preferences here. Um, I think it took a bit of a dip in 1986 with the introduction of more science fiction elements. Um, we got a little more crazy in 1987. But after that, they sort of righted the ship a little bit. Um, and there were a few figures from 88, um, 89, 90 uh, that I think are really great. Of course, I was out of G.I. Joe by 88, 89, 90, um, or at least, you know, part of 88 through, you know, the rest of it. So I missed out on a lot of those great figures, but they did ish, uh, issue some really great figures in those later, later years. I think after, you know, it sort of peaked again, I guess, in around 1991, uh, but it then it kind of started to decline after that. So um, when I finally decided to give it up was after I saw the animated movie, uh, which I saw, I think, sometime in 1988. Um, because I remember collecting a few 1988 figures, but uh, once I saw that movie, I was like, yeah, that's, that's me. I'm done. Um, so that's when, to me, it 
declined to a point where I just couldn't follow it anymore. Uh, okay, so uh, who's next? Who's next? You know, I printed all these out, and it's a lot of pages. But we're making progress. We're making progress. Uh, Jackie Chan, 6500 6, Jr. Jackie Chan says, When I was a kid, I thought Spirit had Professor Xavier-like mind powers and played with them as though he could hear others' thoughts. Um, on the file card, it states he has mysterious powers of the mind. Uh, what does that mean to you? Well, I totally understand why you would see it that way. And I kind of played him that way, and some, he was often sort of written that way. And that's, it's a bit of a trope that a lot of writers use for Native American characters, kind of imbuing them with mystical powers. Um, but um, I, I, I mean, I like Spirit, but I see Spirit as just a very experienced soldier, a uh, very experienced and competent soldier. Um, I've never, uh, you know, thought of him as having, you know, mind reading powers, but, you know, based on what was written about him, I can understand why you would, and I can understand why a lot of other kids might have thought so too. Uh, Sly Coos, Sly Coozy. Sly says, uh, great year of content. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you too. Um, roughly how many G.I. Joe figures did you have as a kid uh, and how many vehicles and play sets? Well, <clears throat> the answer is I don't know. Uh, the reason I don't know is because uh, my brother and I, uh, we had a friend in our neighborhood named Sam. Uh, he lived not too far away. Um, my brother and I got a lot of G.I. Joe stuff. Sam got a lot of G.I. Joe stuff. And we would always play with all that stuff together. We'd either play at Sam's house or he would come over and play at our house. He would bring his toys. We would bring our toys. They'd all get mixed together. And honestly, in my memory, it's hard to, um, it's hard to remember which ones were ours and which ones were Sam's. So that's why I don't know. Um, I do tr like to share a lot of my childhood memories, uh, and I, it, you might get the impression that I remember more of my childhood than I do. I share the memories that are clear, but there's a whole lot of my childhood that's kind of fuzzy in my memory. It was a long time ago, right? Um, so I don't know because some of the stuff that I played with belonged to Sam, and I don't remember which was his and which was ours. Between the three of us, my brother, me, and Sam, we had almost everything, and we played with this stuff all the time. But we didn't really care who it belonged to. We just all played together. Uh, WWJD85 says, um, have you ever seen the G.I. Joe headquarters playset that came out in 1992? I have seen it, but I don't own it yet. I'd be interested in getting that sometime, but I don't have it yet. Uh, Kyle Moody says, which of your video reviews is your favorite? Well, it's hard for me to pick a favorite because when I go back and re-watch my reviews, all I can really see is the mistakes. Every mistake I make gets kind of amplified in my mind, and it really it's hard for me to go back and watch my own stuff. Uh, there are a few, though, that I'm still relatively happy with. Um, the Action Force review that I did with Cyber Tiger, I still like that. Um, a lot of the collaborations that I did, uh, I get the opportunity to work with some really cool creative people. I still enjoy all of those. Um, uh, the Big Boa, you know, I was actually fairly happy with uh, the Big Boa review. Um, I, I, I still like that one. Um, that I don't know if that's my favorite. I don't know if I can pick a favorite. Um, but that's definitely among the, the videos that I still like. Um, Elk Hills One uh, says, um, who would win in a fight, Snake Eyes or Boba Fett? Well, it, the answer is Snake Eyes. Now, I've heard some Star Wars fans defending Boba Fett by saying, hey, Boba, Boba Fett has armor that Snake Eyes' uh, sword could not uh, penetrate. Uh, he has a, a wrist blaster, he has a grapple hook, he has a jet pack. So, you know, it's not going to be an, an easy contest for Snake Eyes. But, uh, no, I don't buy any of that. 
all that armor and all those gadgets are only good if you can use them properly. And I think Boba Fett has demonstrated that he can't use them properly. They didn't save him. They didn't save him in Return of the Jedi. Uh, he got knocked into the Sarlacc pit by, uh, by Han Solo, who, by the way, was still mostly blind at the time. And why? Because Boba Fett uh, did not have sufficient awareness of what was going on around him. So that is not a mistake that Snake Eyes would make. Uh, so, yeah, Snake Eyes every time. Uh, Swamp Thing says, why are all the lawyers I know so miserable? Well, the answer is it's a difficult job with a lot of conflict all the time. Um, you don't necessarily get a lot of true victories. Uh, and um, people hate you no matter how good a job you do. So um, it's... It can be a rewarding career, but it's not an easy one. And uh, I can't speak for all lawyers, but that's um, uh, th I think that's how a lot of them feel. Uh, Bloody Card says, "Hello, I started watching your videos um, about uh, three months ago. Uh, for you've been what? I'm sorry, you've been watching the videos for about three months. Thank you. Uh, and he likes them. Thank you very much." Uh, I think I've watched about half of your videos. Thanks. I hope you watch the better half. Uh, my question is, do you plan on making one day reviews of the G.I. Joe Street Fighter line? I really like the idea of Guile and Bison military side uh, when I was a kid. As G.I. Joe was my favorite toys and, uh, and Street Fighter, my favorite video game. Again, love your reviews and keep up the good work. Thank you very much. I will try. I don't have plans to review the Street Fighter series. Um, when I was deciding what the scope of this project was, I had to draw a line somewhere. I had to decide, you know, you know what's in and what's out. And um, I was never a fan of the Street Fighter series, so I just chose to draw the line at Street Fighter and not include Street Fighter in this project. I know a lot of people liked them, but um, I'm, I think I'm going to stick to my plan here uh, and stick to the, the scope of my project. Uh, and so, yeah, I don't have plans to review Street Fighter, uh, but uh, hey, somebody else may do it. Uh, I know uh, some other reviewers like Street Fighter, uh, so we, you know, maybe one of them can uh, do a Street Fighter review for you. M. Ross says, uh, what was the one Joe you never got as a kid and always wanted? Mine was Stalker. Well, hey, I, I did have Stalker, but that, that's a good one. And I hope you're able to get your hands on a Stalker now. Uh, the figure that I didn't have as a kid but always wanted was Hooded Cobra Commander, the very name of this channel. Um, I didn't get one as a kid. I, I had friends who had it, so I was able to see it and occasionally play with it, but I never had one of my own. And now I do, and that was actually a, a really thrilling time um, in my adult collecting experience, is to finally get my own hooded Cobra Commander figure. Yorktown Joe says, uh, did you ever have any of these Sergeant Rock 3.75 inch figures uh, that were out around 1982 to 1983? <clears throat> they were seven point of articulation and the bad guys were dressed in black uniforms uh, with snake and fire themed uh, card art. Um, the answer is yes, I did have a few of them. I remember the Sergeant Rock figures. Um, I used to enjoy reading the Sergeant Rock comic book. Um, and so, yeah, when I saw the figures, uh, I did get a few of them. I don't think I got a lot of them. Um, they were in G.I. Joe scale, which I appreciated. Um, but I, my recollection is the quality wasn't quite the same as G.I. Joe. Um, and uh, I don't think they were around uh, very long. At least I don't recall them being around very long. But I do remember I got a few of them. I don't remember which ones I got, but I do know that I had a few of them. Um, so I, I hope that answers your question. <clears throat> Andrew Bell says, uh, will you ever have a video for Leonard Corps and Remco American Force as a video for those other guys on the Joe or Cobra teams? You know, it's a good question. That kind of ties into the previous question because uh, we did get the Leonard Corps figures as well and the American Defense figures. Uh, some of the Leonard uh, core figures 
were compatible with G.I. Joe for customizing. So uh, we really liked uh, getting the ones that had parts that you could swap out with Joe figures. Uh, so uh, will I do a video on them? Um, I don't have very many of them now. I'd have to get quite a few more of them to feel comfortable doing a video on them. But if I could get the figures to review, I would love to do uh, a video on them because, you know, even though they weren't as important to us as G.I. Joe, for me and my friends, you know, they were important. They were part of our playtime. Uh, we enjoyed getting them and we enjoyed playing with them and customizing them. It's, I think it's an important topic. It's not a topic that I'm prepared to talk about yet, uh, but maybe someday in the future. <clears throat> uh, Bat Hulk says, uh, if you could put any number of accessories together for an ultimate figure, what would you choose? Thanks for all your hard work and Merry Christmas. Well, I can tell you the accessories that I always liked to put on my custom figures as a kid. I like Footloose's helmet. Um, I like Leatherneck's rifle and Rakondo's backpack. I just love all of those accessories. And, you know, when I was trying to put together military figures, I used those accessories a lot. Sometimes I would even get, like, the Battle Gear accessory pack versions of those accessories and paint them better colors. So, uh, yeah, those, are, those would be the ones I would go with. Uh, John Ulrich says, which figure or vehicle did you enjoy reviewing the most from this year? Um, let's see. I really enjoyed the Big Boa review. I enjoyed that a lot. Um, the vehicle I most enjoyed reviewing was probably the Mamba because I got to work with so many other really cool reviewers, and that was, that was a bit of a milestone for me. So uh, the Mamba review I very much enjoyed. Uh, Forge Masijewski. Again, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. I'll just go with Forge. What characters slash vehicles do you think should be created in the Vintage line that may have been done in uh, the modern lines or not at all? Well, like I said before, I always wanted to, wanted to get a Vintage Quinn figure uh, and like a Dr. Venom. A Vintage Dr. Venom would have been nice. Um, as for vehicles, uh, the Cobra transport helicopter that we often saw in the uh, comic book, really wanted to have that as a toy. Kevin Carter says, uh, hey HCC788, um, I've seen your activity around the finest uh, costume club. Are you a member? Uh, would you consider joining? If so, what character would you like to portray? Thanks. Um, okay, I, I love the finest. Uh, it's a great cosplay play club. I'm not a member. Uh, I would love to join, and I would really love to do a Hooded Cobra Commander cosplay. I've got an idea for it, but I just have not had the time to actually put it together. Um, I have accessories for it because uh, viewers have sent in the, the Cobra Commander gun and a, a really cool Cobra staff that I think would go great with that costume, but I just haven't had the time to do it. If I ever have the time to do it, uh, then I would apply to The Finest because I think it's a great uh, great organization and I love what they do. Okay, Jack Loera says, is there an issue of the comic book series that left a bad taste in your mouth like the animated movie? That's uh, a good question. Well, not as bad as the animated movie, but um, as much as I love the comic book series, it is not without flaws. Uh, there were some stinkers in the comic book series, too. Um, a couple that come to mind that um, I really didn't like from the Special Missions series, uh, issue number 24, the one where they had the Lady Joes dressed up in, uh, in, in costumes. and It was the one at the baseball game. It's the one with Crystal Ball. I just don't like that issue. I just thought it was not very good. Uh, the one that came after that, uh, issue number 25, the Tiger Force issue, um, I had some problems with the story for that one as well. Um, the, um, at one point, there were Transformers in the main G.I. Joe series. Now, if you want to do a crossover with Transformers, fine. 
If you want to do a special story mini series with G.I. Joe and Transformers, okie dokie. But, you know, I really don't need Transformers in my main G.I. Joe story. That's, um, I, mean, I like Transformers. I'm not saying I don't like Transformers. I just, I really don't need Transformers in my G.I. Joe. Now, I don't hate that stuff uh, nearly on the same level as the animated movie, but. Yeah, it's just not, not my thing. Not my thing. Christopher Hilt says, Concerning ranks, did you adhere to actual U.S. rankings concerning your personnel, uh, personal Joe team, or <clears throat> did you supply, uh, or I'm sorry, did you simply make Stalker second in command, knowing that he's your favorite? Uh, personally, uh, I tend to use the comic and Sunbow cartoon uh, as my go-to sources for who's in charge. Uh, also, sometimes I feel like certain Joes have been given the wrong rank, especially in the case of Flint, who started out as an E6 staff sergeant uh, when he was supposed to be a warrant officer. His Tiger, Tiger Force file card listed him as W3, uh, which I'm guessing is supposed to be uh, CW3 or W03. However, uh, the uh, Eco Warriors Flint and the uh, Desert Paratrooper Flint from 1994, both, both listed his grade as W02. I'm just curious as to what your view on the matter is. Good question. <clears throat> and you point out a big problem with the file cards. I, I, as a kid, I would have loved to follow the uh, rank, the, the regular normal U, US military ranking. Uh, but the file cards, as you pointed out, were not consistent. Uh, so that's kind of it's kind of doesn't make sense. So it's, it's sort of impossible to do it the way that it's on the file cards and really be consistent. So you point out actually a really good point uh, and kind of a flaw in the grades that we got on the file cards. Um, I actually really liked the pecking order that they had in the Sunbow series with Hawk, uh, Duke, Flint and Beachhead. Even though as far as their actual rank goes, it really shouldn't work that way, but I still uh, I still liked it because it was clear. At least I liked the clarity of it. Um, as for the way I played with them, uh, I would often have Stalker as a mission leader. Um, you know, he's on base, he has, he's a sergeant, uh, so he um, would um, follow the, the usual, you know, uh, chain of command, but because of ex his experience, I would often have him as the leader of specific missions. Um, because of that, though, if we had like different squads doing different things, I would rarely have Stalker paired with Duke or Flint, because Duke would lead his own squad, and Flint would lead his own squad, and then Stalker would lead a mission over here. So uh, often they wouldn't necessarily work together because I saw all of them as leaders, and, you know, I didn't necessarily want to double up on team leaders for one mission. Now, that's kind of how I looked at it. Uh, Sheila and Keith Koch say, um, What are your favorite G.I. Joe slash Cobra playsets? Top five, if you wish. Um, and the USS flag is disqualified since some argue it's a playset slash vehicle. Um, Second, can you share a good resource for vintage uh, or even repro Joe parts? Well, to answer your first question, um, leaving out the USS flag, which I consider to be a playset, um, number one is probably the 1983 Headquarters Command Center. Number two would be uh, the Terror Drome. Uh, number three, now again, cons um, considering the possibility that could it could either be a vehicle or a playset. The mobile command center, you could consider it either a vehicle or a playset, in my opinion. Uh, but I'll put that at number three. Uh, number four, uh, the transportable tactical battle platform. That one is definitely not a vehicle. Uh, and uh, again, if you consider it a playset, the Defiant Shuttle, uh, this one back here, could also be considered either a vehicle or a playset, so um, I'll put that at number five. Um, to answer your other question, um, I try to steer clear of repro parts. 
uh, but there are a lot of sellers of uh, vintage G.I. Joe parts, uh, parts out there. You know, check eBay, check the G.I. Joe Facebook groups. Uh, there was a website that sold G.I. Joe parts that unfortunately recently closed down. Uh, G.I. Joe Junkyard was a great place to find specific parts. Um, so sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to find the part that you want to track down, but they are out there. Um, so just check all the, the GI Joe groups um, and ask for help because a lot of people may have the parts even if they don't have them for sale just at the moment. So um, you ask around and you can definitely find lots of vintage parts. Uh, DC36 says, do you think Hasbro should make the original 13 uh, in six inch format would you buy uh, would you buy them well I don't collect modern figures so I probably wouldn't I know that uh, a lot of collectors would like to see the figures issued uh, in six inch scale uh, the question does come up from time to time um, if they made them uh, keep a couple things in mind they would probably be expensive uh, because they probably have a relatively limited production run. Um, and there's no way you would get any vehicles for that scale. Vehicles would be prohibitively expensive to produce. So uh, it it's not my thing since I don't really collect uh, modern stuff. I do get modern figures donated to me sometime, which is cool. But I don't typically go out with the intent of collecting them. Uh, so it's, it wouldn't be a thing for me, but yeah, some modern collectors have expressed an interest in that series. So uh, yeah, maybe they could, but just keep in mind they would probably be rather pricey. Um, Marcel De Bruin. Marcel, uh, did you ever own G.I. Joe inspired toys like Remco U.S. Forces, uh, Galoob A-Team, or The Core? To name a few. If so, did you enjoy them and did you integrate them into your playing with G.I. Joe? Well, I did talk about this a little bit. Yes, I did get them and we had a number of uses for them. We did use them with G.I. Joe sometimes if we just needed like extra soldiers or like some other faction other than Cobra that G.I. Joe would fight. Uh, we could use those figures for that and also we used them for customizing. So yeah, we had a lot of fun with them. Uh, Axilion says, um, I asked this once before, I think, uh, have you ever thought about doing a music review slash discussion, discussion channel? Uh, from your shirts, it seems like, uh, it, it seems we both like old school industrial music and there's not much out there for that fan base. I think you'd be really good at it. Uh, thanks for all you do. Thank you. And thanks for noticing the old t-shirts. I appreciate that. Yeah, uh, I used to be a big fan of that stuff. I've been kind of out of it for a while. Um, I don't think that I would be the best person to do a channel like that. I probably somebody with you know more current knowledge would uh, would be a better person to dive into that. I would probably watch a channel uh, for those uh, you know covering those bands. Uh, it would be very nostalgic for me to uh, uh, to look at those bands again. Uh, but uh, but probably not something that I would be the best at. Uh, there, I, I'll bet there would be probably somebody out there that could do a better job of it than me. Uh, but hey, thanks for noticing the t-shirts, and uh, I was glad to, uh, I'm glad to know that there's somebody out there that uh, like those bands. Okay, Invader 6 Dark Lord Cobra 66 uh, says, uh, I just picked up a few more G.I. Joe vehicles and found some very cool ones. They're, uh, they are in my video if you wish to see. You might like some of them. The black all striker is just like the vintage. Well, thank you. And uh, if I have time, I would like to check out your video. I'll do my best to find the time to do it. Terry Turner uh, says, are you going to purchase the 30th anniversary Pursuit of Cobra uh, Sergeant uh, Stalker? Uh, oh, the Pursuit of Cobra Sergeant Stalker and compare it to the original figure. It is, in my opinion, the best version of the, the character with the best articulation. Well, um, I didn't have any specific plans to do that. Like I said, I don't um, collect modern figures. If I at some point acquired one, I'd certainly love to compare it to the vintage figure, and I would definitely do that. I just didn't have any specific intention of doing that at the moment, but it's something that I would consider for the future. Thomas P. says, What was the hardest G.I. Joe in your collection to locate, and where uh, were you able to find him? 
Well, not, not including play sets, talking about figures. Um, the hardest figure that I've collected so far is rather ironic. Uh, Steel Brigade version 1E, the variant version 1E, was the hardest figure uh, for me to find that I actually found. But now we, just, we find out that version 1E is not a legitimate variant. Version 1E it was kit bashed from other figures. So even though I found one, now I find that the one that I got is just a kit bash of earlier versions of Steel Brigade. Now that's okay, that's okay. Now that was a lot of time wasted looking for that figure, but I'm still happy to have the knowledge. I, I'd, I'd rather, uh, I'd rather know that um, it's an error than to persist in believing the error. So uh, now we know Steel Brigade version 1E, not a legitimate variant, which consequently is why it was so freaking hard to find. I guess I had to just wait until some unscrupulous seller. Um, uh, sold a fake version. It's not really fake because it's all vintage parts, but still not the legitimate variant. Uh, and I think I found it on eBay, uh, just scouring eBay for months and months and months until I finally spotted one. Uh, Steve Johnson. <clears throat> Steven Johnson says, uh, what was one thing you wished Hasbro had created in the vehicle line that never transpired? The Cobra transport helicopter that we saw in the comic books always wanted it as a toy. It looks like it was modeled after a toy in the comic book, the way the artists drew it, but it was never a toy, always wanted it. Fragminian says, do you still have a Holy Grail type figure left to collect? Oh yes, oh yes. Um, at the moment, the Holy Grail is the Gold Head Steel Brigade. And yes, I know what the prices are. You don't have to tell me. I've seen the prices on the thing. That's why it's a Holy Grail. I will get it eventually. It's not the highest priority right now. I can wait. I can be patient. But uh, yeah, that's, that's the one right now that I would consider to be the Holy Grail, the Gold Head Steel Brigade. Um, it's the one Steel Brigade that I don't have yet, um, and it's the one that someday I must have. Uh, David Fitchner says, I love melodrama. Well, I love marshmallow drama. Uh, when you played with the toys as a kid, did your Joes ever die? Yes, we were brutal. Joes would die all the time. Um, you know, we had epic battles with, you know, massive uh, uh, casualty uh, counts. It was, uh, you know, huge loss of life. It was horrendous. Uh, but, you know, when we would start a new storyline, they would be resurrected and we'd just, you know, play with them again. Uh, I think there were some times when we'd actually bury the dead figures. Uh, but, of course, we'd dig them up again because we'd, we'd play with them again. Uh, Jeff A. Dragon says... Uh, what do Crimson Guards carry in their backpacks, in your opinion? Good question. I think the Crimson Guard carry in their backpack laundry. Literally, I think they carry in their backpack their business suits that they wear when they're undercover. Uh, and maybe even the backpack itself could unfold and reconfigure into a briefcase. And they could put their, put their Crimson Guard uniform into the briefcase, except that the helmet wouldn't fit. Anyway, I think, I think they carry laundry in their backpack. Uh, uh, Kaylee Matthew Commendador says, What are your thoughts on the canceled 1995 Joe figures and vehicles? You can find pictures of them mostly on yojo.com. Uh, P.S. Quick, uh, quick suggestion for the next Cobra Convergence member, a YouTuber named Michael Mercy. He's another Canadian Joe fan. Um, okay, as far as the 1995 figures, I have seen some of them. They were not released, but I've seen some of the unreleased figures. Uh, they did look like they were going to continue the basic kind of aesthetic of the 1994 line into 1995. 
I'm not a big fan of the 1994 line, so I probably would not have been a big fan of the 1995 series either. As for Michael Mercy, I'd love to have him uh, on board for uh, Cobra Convergence. I'll definitely extend the invite to him, and uh, he's welcome to join if he wants to. Um, I haven't started working on the next Cobra Convergence yet. I plan to start working on it after the new year. After that, uh, people should start getting their invitations. Chris Brewer says, uh, when will we get to see a Hoodie Coco in an actual Cobra Commander hood? As soon as I can do that cosplay, as soon as I can do that cosplay, I don't know when that'll be, but when I do that cosplay, then you'll get to see it. I really do think I have a good idea for it. It just, it just takes time, you know, time that I have to dedicate to doing it. Uh, but I'd like to someday, I would. Uh, Invader 6 Dark Lord Cobra 66 asks another question. He says, what collectible store is your favorite to buy from? Uh, we actually have um, a vintage toy mall uh, here in the town where I'm living right now. Um, it hasn't been around for very long. It's relatively new. Uh, before we had that, it was kind of a, a desert. It was a toy desert. It was hard to find a local dealer that had, you know, decent uh, inventory. But now that we have the Vintage Toy Mall, that's my favorite place to go. Uh, Tyrell White says, uh, what do you consider to be the best and worst figure and vehicle for top, middle, and bottom tiers? Um, this is, I don't know if I can answer that. That's a hard question. Uh, and it, it's not because I don't want to answer it. It's because of basically the flaw in my rating system. Um, to me, it, there are too many factors to consider uh, when giving a figure or vehicle a rating. That's why I don't go with like a star rating system or like a number rating system. It would just, it, I, I, can't, I couldn't do it. It, it just, it would be impossible. Um, so instead I opted for some very vague uh, ratings, just just top, middle, and bottom tier, and there's a lot of wiggle room between all of those. So I don't know if I could pick the best and worst from each tier. Uh, so I apologize for not being able to adequately answer your question, but the problem is not with your question. Your question is fine. The problem is it's a flaw in my rating system uh, in that I don't know that I can accurately answer the question. Um, I mean, I can tell you which figures are my favorites and which are my least favorites, uh, which I've already done a bit, but, um, but I don't know that I could parse it out quite that, uh, uh, quite that well. So I apologize for not having a better answer to your question. Uh, Byron, uh, I think this is supposed to be Jackson, but I think I may have uh, clipped off part of the name. Uh, Byron uh, says... Uh, what would your advice? Uh, what would be your advice to a new collector? Uh, what years offer the best quality versus price? Thanks, CC. Uh, you're welcome. Um, okay, my advice to a new collector um, is uh, try to buy in lots if you can, instead of buying individual figures. Unless there's just no way for you to get an individual figure, um, if you buy in lots. Uh, you pay less per figure or per vehicle. And if you end up with doubles, you can just sell the extra ones uh, and have more money to buy more toys. Now, some vehicles and figures, you can't really get that way. It's hard to find them in a lot with other figures for a decent price. You're going to have to go out and find that specific one and you know pay full price for it. <clears throat> but as for what year provides the best value for uh, the price, uh, I'd have to say, I'm going to go back to 1985, because, I mean, 1985 has a lot of high quality figures, as do a lot of other years in the line, but in 1985, the figures were produced in, in pretty large quantities, so for the most part, with a few exceptions, there are exceptions, but for the most part, they're still pretty common. So you can still find them for reasonable prices. So uh, I would, you know, for the value, I think 1985 is the be is the best. Now, if you go into the 90s, like 93, 94, you can get some cheap stuff. All right, you can get some stuff that uh, is is you can get a lot of stuff for a small price. So if you're only looking at price, 
I'd say go to uh, the 90s. But as far as quality goes, there's a bit of a dip in quality in the 90s. It's one of the reasons why it's not too expensive. Uh, we've looked at some 90s figures and vehicles, so keep that in mind. Zach Ivan 75 says, Are you going to do an entry for Toy Poise Pocket Penny Toy uh, videos? Uh, that's a good idea. I hadn't thought about that, but uh, perhaps I should. That's something I'll try to look into. Uh, thanks for suggesting it. Um, <clears throat> he also asks, are you going to do a New Year slash Christmas special? Well, I did a New Year, or I'm sorry, I did a Christmas special, uh, which was the retrospective, and I guess this is the New Year special, so the answer to that is yes. Um, he also asks, is there any of the 80s uh, G.I. Joes you haven't reviewed yet? Uh, the answer is yes, there are a bunch of 80s Joes I haven't reviewed yet. Uh, go to the website, go to hcc788.com, and you can check by year and see if I've reviewed something yet. But there's a ton of stuff in the 80s I haven't got to yet. <clears throat> uh, Forge, again. Uh, we uh, read one of Forge's questions earlier. Uh, he says, um, What is your opinion on what will happen to the G.I. Joe line since Je Hasbro isn't pushing that specific product anymore? Well, <clears throat> I think it all depends on how these uh, movies do. If the movies do well, we'll get a lot of G.I. Joe. If they don't do well, G.I. Joe will be back on the shelf again. Uh, the thing is, though, historically, G.I. Joe has made Hasbro so much money that even if G.I. Joe isn't, isn't successful this time around, it's only a matter of time before somebody, somebody at Hasbro decides they're going to try to make some money with it again. So, um, you know, I think at some point we would still have G.I. Joe in some form. But um, if the movies are successful, I do think you will see a lot more of it. So I think it all hinges on how these movies do. So if you want to see more G.I. Joe, you know, cross your fingers and hope that these movies are good and really hit well with the general audience. Uh, Draws Walker 9 says, which G.I. Joe comic or cartoon episode is your favorite? Um, <clears throat> I think I already mentioned issue number four. I don't know if issue number 43 is my favorite issue, but that certainly had a lot of impact on me. It'd be hard to pick a specific favorite issue of the comic book series, but my favorite um, episodes of the animated series are Worlds Without End, Parts 1 and 2. I know that's probably another cliche. A lot of people have that answer, but it's the right answer. Those were great episodes. Uh, Pence of Ruins says, uh, I love this channel. I love G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe is a lifetime obsession and passion for me. Thank you for your passion and love for G.I. Joe. What is your favorite G.I. Joe subset? Mine by far is the Iron Grenadiers. Well, I thought... Um, out and um, well thought out and an amazing at attention to detail. Well, Iron Grenadiers is great. I mean, that's in, a, a good one to pick as your favorite. Um, if I had to pick my favorite, uh, it would probably be uh, you know I think the Dreadnoughts. I think I love I love the Dreadnoughts, especially the early Dreadnoughts. Something about their anarchic nature appeals to my inner punk rocker. Um, that and um, Night Force, even though Night Force is all just reissued stuff, some of the updates of the colors of Night Force figures I really love. Uh, so Night Force is a contender, but I really like the Dreadnoughts. Uh, Benny Benzino says, Did you get uh, Joes for Christmas as a child, and what were they? Well, I remember getting the 1983... Uh, headquarters command center for Christmas as a kid, and I loved it. Um, as the years went by, I think I got fewer and fewer GI Joes for Christmas because I think my parents had a hard time keeping up with what I had. Um, I got most most of the Joes I got as a kid. I bought myself. Um, I would mow uh, lawns in the summertime to get money, and I would use that money to buy my own Joes. Uh, so. Um, as for what I got for Christmas, it's really hard to remember specifically. Again, it, it's hard for me to remember exactly what was mine and what belonged to friends. Um, and like I said before, you know, 
I don't have perfect recall from my childhood. I do try to share as much of it as, uh, as I can remember because I do have a lot of great childhood memories. But there are also sections of my childhood that I don't remember as well. I really wish that we had more photographs um, of Christmas, like the Christmas presents I got as a kid. My parents didn't take a lot of pictures um, when we were opening Christmas presents, which uh, is kind of weird because that was kind of a family tradition for a lot of people. So I don't even have a lot of photographs to look back on to remember what we got for Christmas. So uh, not the best answer to your question, but I do remember that 1983 um, Cobra, I'm sorry, the 1983 G.I. Joe uh, headquarters, and I loved that. Uh, Bradley Good, uh, he asks a question. He says, uh, what did you think, uh, what do you think Hasbro should do to commemorate the 40th anniversary of a real American hero in 2002? It's hard to believe the 40th anniversary is coming up. That is incredible. That means I'm really old. Uh, but as for what they should do, um, I hope they don't just reissue a bunch of figures, um, just give us a bunch of reissues, like mostly what they did with the 50th anniversary line. Um, I think the only way to adequately, adequately celebrate the 40th anniversary is to commission a real U.S. Navy aircraft carrier as the USS Flag. Somebody get on that. It needs to happen. A Not Snarl says, uh, were any of your original figures stolen as a child? Probably so, but I don't specifically remember having figures stolen. <clears throat> if I lost figures, it was most likely I lost them while playing with them outside. Or, you know, I would leave figures at Sam's house and forget to bring them back home, or he would leave figures at our house and not take them back. So I'm sure I lost figures. I don't remember specific ones, though, and I'm sure I had some stolen. You know, that probably happened to every kid. Um... Diener Wiener says, I like the name, Diener Wiener, says, uh, who is your favorite Street Fighter II G.I. Joe? I like E. Honda. Uh, sadly, I do not have a favorite Street Fighter G.I. Joe. M. Lopez says, so, taste great or less filling? Uh, but seriously, um, how did the killing off of older Joes in the comic affect you uh, when you read them at a younger age? I started to read them again and was pretty surprised at how many Joes got whacked in such, uh, in such a short time span. Uh, I doubt I, it would have affected my play scenarios um, any as a kid because they never followed the comic or cartoon anyway. Great channel. Keep it up. Thank you very much. First of all, less filling. Uh, and to answer the rest of it, um, in the early issues of the comic book, um, not a lot, you didn't lose a lot of actual Joes. You lost a lot of side characters. I mean, like, General Flag was killed, but General Flag didn't have a figure. Um, uh, like, Quinn, Dr. Venom, uh, Candy, the Softmaster, they all died, and that was, you know, kind of shocking in the comic books. But, uh, but again, not actual Joes. Um, it was only later in the series, and kind of after I had stopped reading, that some actual Joes died in the comic book. And I've only read those issues uh, as an adult uh, collector, uh, and I thought they were had a lot of impact. I mean, uh, that's the way to get your attention. Um, I know that Larry was allowed to kill off some of those Joes because... They were their their figures were discontinued. They weren't they weren't on the pegs anymore, uh, so they were expendable. But it really does drive home the costs of war, uh, and I think Larry very consciously decided to do that, and I understand why. Um, and like you, it would not have affected my play scenarios at all. Our play scenarios did not copy the comic book or the cartoon exactly as as you did so if a character had died in the comic book we, we would have still kept on playing with them um but that doesn't mean i would dislike the story though if you know give them a good death and uh i'll still appreciate uh the story and the drama the dramatic effect of it 
Uh, the Orderly Owly Viper says, what is your favorite part slash feature of the USS Flag and why? There are so many great features on that. I like the bridge. I know the bridge is mostly, mostly just like chairs and uh, uh, green community, uh, uh, computer terminals and stuff like that. But I just like the idea of being on the bridge and sitting in the Admiral's chair with that great big wheel steering this giant uh, aircraft carrier, you know, looking down at the deck and seeing the, the jets take off and, the, and land. Um, that would be pretty exhilarating to me. Um, but there's so many other great features. I really like the, the sound system, which is kind of cool. Uh, I like the arrestor cable. Um, that, that's a nice touch. Um, I like a lot of the features. But my favorite, I guess, would probably be the the bridge and the idea of like just being on that bridge and seeing those sky strikers down on the deck that would be very exciting to me um rob m says uh you said before uh you would customize your joes as a kid what is one custom that really sticks in your mind that you remember and what figures was it made of well me and my brother and our friend Sam, we would we all made custom figures of ourselves. So we made a figure that was supposed I made a figure that was supposed to be me. And my brother made a figure that was supposed to be him and then Sam made his own figure and the those would be, you know, basically our sort of fan insertion figures in our own storylines. Uh but I honestly don't remember uh what parts made up my figure. I remember that most of the parts that made up my brother's figure. My brother's figure had dial tones head um, and the chest and arms of Falcon. And I don't remember whose legs he had, but probably somebody like Flint. Uh, we really liked camouflage. So if, if the figure had camouflage, those parts got used a lot. So um, I, I kind of remember my brother's figure, but I can't for the life of me remember what my figure was made of. But uh, that's kind of what we did with customizers. We enjoyed like um, that kind of uh, uh, immersion in, this, uh, in the toys and by m making ourselves in plastic form. Uh, Jason Flemma says, what is your favorite G.I. Joe slash Cobra aircraft uh, uh, or Cobra aircraft? Jason Flemma says, what is your favorite G.I. Joe or Cobra aircraft? It helps if I read the question correctly. Uh, my favorite of all the aircrafts, Joe or Cobra, is still the Sky Striker. I love the Sky Striker. It's a great toy. It's a great jet. It looks great. It has great features. Uh, of course, it's not perfect. It does have the landing gear that's tied to the uh, the wing mechanism, and a lot of people don't like that. I understand, but I still think it's great. I love the Sky Striker. We're almost done. <clears throat> Glenn Robbins says, Okay, Hoodie Coco. I know you aren't a fan of the 90s uh, G.I. Joes, but which out of the 90s Joes, including Cobra, uh, would be your favorite one? Well... Right now, and I can't say this is going to hold forever, but at this exact moment, um, my favorite 90s Joe is Big Ben. Fantastic figure. Fantastic figure. Love it. Love it. I think that just represents the best of what the 90s could do. Love Big Ben. And finally, last question, and technically the first question that was asked, is from Chris MC83, who says, in your opinion, what's the worst G.I. Joe figure ever? That would have to be Golobulus. Golobulus is a terrible figure. I, now, I don't like the character. I don't like the movie. Even if I did, though, I would have a hard time with the figure. The Golobulus figure has the tail gimmick, and it it cannot stand up. You cannot bend the tail in any way that will allow the figure to stand up. Uh, I don't know how you play with the thing. It's a bad figure. I can't stand Golobulus. It stinks. And that's it. That is the last question. 
Uh, so that wraps up 2019. Thank you to everyone who participated. I hope I didn't miss any questions. I don't think I missed any questions. Uh, some people just made comments and didn't actually ask a question. I tried to skip those. Uh, but thank you, everyone. This has been uh, the most successful year this channel has ever had. Um, when we started the year, we had fewer than 4,000 subscribers. This year we hit 4,000 subscribers and then 5,000 and then 6,000. And uh, as I'm making this video, we just passed 7,000 subscribers. Uh, it, it's amazing. And I'm so grateful to have you all here. I cannot wait to see what 2009 brings. Um, it, I, I'm hoping next year will be a great year too. Uh, I hope we get to meet a lot of you people. I hope some of you will come out to Joe Fest. Um, but uh, thank you. All I can say is thank you for everything you do for me. Uh, you have made this experience uh, better than I could ever imagine that it would be. Uh, so I think I have the best viewers on YouTube. I mean, look at these questions. Some of these questions, these are like smart questions from smart people. Um, I, 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 I know that a lot of channels, uh, even big channels, would envy what we have here. We have a great uh, community of folks here, so thank you for being a part of it. Um, and at that, I think it's time to finally let you go. That's it. 2018 is in the books. I will see you in 2019. And until then, remember the slogan, only G.I. Joe... Yes, I'm going to say it. Last time in 2018, it's... I didn't make it up, by the way. It comes from the 1964 G.I. Joe commercial. But it bears repeating, only G.I. Joe is...